Hello everyone. Today we will speak about connected planning, connected planning between strategic finance and HR. Before to start the demo of the plat Anaplan platform, I want to share with you uh, Anaplan in seven words. As you can see, Anaplan is a pretty simple platform with only seven words to understand how it works. The first uh, word is APUB. The APUB is our website where you can find pre-built model available for our uh, customer. The second one is workspace. Workspace is uh, a space in the cloud secure for each one of our customer. On those workspace, you can build as many models as you want. A model can be a model for finance, another one for marketing, another one for HR, another one for supply chain. List is a dimension, a hierarchy that you can use in order to build exactly uh, your business process. By default, you have two native uh, lists, which are version and time. Another example of list could be uh, your geo uh, dimension, uh, your product uh, hierarchy. A module is a multidimensional uh, data. Uh, you will cross your different uh, list dimension hierarchy in order uh, to build exactly uh, your business process. Crossing um, at the intersection of a module, you will create line item, which are only KPIs, metrics, uh, in order to enter data and calculation rule. One example of a line item will be uh, the number of products sold, crossing your hierarchy of products, um, geography, time, and version. And the last word is dashboard. The dashboard is the user interface into the model. You will push module into your dashboard in order to be used by the end user, uh, in order to create um, the hierarchy, to enter data, to make simulation. Now, let's enter in Anaplan. I will start by this application of uh, strategic finance. And after, you will see that we can communicate between two different models in Anaplan, this financial model with this HR model. The first thing I want to do in this model of strategic finance is to be able to set my baseline. In order to do that, for each one of the three different metrics, revenue, cost of sales, and OPEX, I will set a manual, manual adjustment. So for example, for my revenue, based on my last year value, I will put 5% of increase. For my cost of sales, I will put 4% of increase. And for my OPEX, I will set minus 3%. So here I have defined my baseline uh, strategic planning in terms of finance. What I will do in second step is I will manage different scenario um, for my planning. As you can see here, I have uh, already three different scenario. I have my baseline, one realistic and one base case. What I will do is that I will add one scenario which I will call customer first. And I will add some initiative in order to change a bit um, the, 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 my planning on my baseline. I will add two different initiative. The first one will be customer satisfaction, and the second one will be enablement of sales team. I add those two different initiatives on my scenario customer first, and I will be able for those two uh, initiatives to set different objectives. So for this one, I have three different things. One is higher customer satisfaction team, increase cap team, and don't say it, expand discounting. By default, those uh, benefits are defined here, but I can also change it manually. 
So I can define that higher customer satisfaction will increase my benefit by this amount. It can also cost me a bit more than what is expected here. And I can set it here. In terms of FTE, we have, as we have the same for benefits and costs, we have some targets which are already defined. Here, we can set that I want to have five, five, six in terms of FT. Here for now, it doesn't change anything for my customer first. We have the same amount uh, between my baseline and my customer first. In order to do that, I need to change the allocation in terms of geo. So for this um, initiative, I will tell to the tool that uh, the impact will be only in America. By doing that, I'm changing in real time um, the customer first scenario. I will go back to my strategic planning and now I will be able, I want to be able to cascade my objective under the different region uh, in the USA. As you can see for now, I don't have uh, my target which are uh, set. In order to do that, I will be able to lock one of the scenario, which will be the customer first. I can lock it, I run this process. And by doing that here, now, as you can see, I will be able to set uh, and to um, allocate properly my objective over the different region. I can, if I want to do it, I can override my target and I can change it in real time in order to have exactly the amount I want. Now I would go to the strategic HR process. Now I will be the uh, manager of uh, HR for the whole company. And the first thing I want to do is to be able to communicate between this model of finance and this model of HR. The first step is to be able to uh, take what we have set in the financial uh, strategic planning in terms of initiative and FT. In order to do that, I just launch this process in order to update my model. As you can see, I can have the exact initiative and FT. So for, for customer satisfaction, I have still the three initiative I've set in the previous model, and I have my objective of five, five, six in terms of FT. In customer satisfaction, for now, in higher customer satisfaction, I have set five people. As you can see, in this model, I have already uh, defined uh, four new roles in order to uh, succeed in this initiative. So what I will do here, I will set a new role for this one. It will be a junior marketing, and it will start at the same date than all the other one. And now I will set the different um, configuration talent that I will need for this uh, position. In terms of talent configuration, I can override uh, those metrics. So for example, here, um, in terms of personal personality, I can set it to a four if I want. This is a very uh, important functionality of Anaplan. You can uh, review in real time a show history. So here I can see that uh, these people uh, I had just set needs to have, uh, in terms of talent configuration, in terms of personal responsibility, it needs to have a four. If I change it again to nothing, and I go back to show history, in real time I have the new value of this matrix. I can do the same for the skill configuration. So here, 
I can set to have a master or a doctora for this person. I can do it. And of course, in terms of uh, experience, uh, I can set um, more uh, euro of experience in one different um, department. Now I can review the gap analysis uh, for this uh, junior marketing position. How can I match the different um, objectives I have uh, set before between all the different people I have in my uh, organization? This is done in this uh, dashboard of uh, employee assessment. For all the different employees I have entered in my application, I have set different score uh, for all the different uh, capability of my uh, employee. This is why here in this dashboard, I can review gap analysis between what I have set and uh, what uh, is needed for the job. Here I can have a better filter in order to reduce the different people that match what I've set. I have the match between the um, what I've set here, the talent configuration, another one for skill match and your experiences. Here I will took the three best candidates, Alison, Andrew, and Alex. And now I want to compare them in terms of cost analysis. So I will launch another process in order to select the three people. And I will go to the resource cost analysis in order to measure what will be uh, the best candidate on term of costing. As you can see, in terms of cost of train, uh, it doesn't cost anything because they already have exactly uh, the match in terms of uh, experiences and um, training. And I can see that in terms of cost, the best choice will be Alex. So I can select him for this position and I can uh, send an email or uh, um, verification to uh, his manager. Thank you for watching and goodbye.